broken pieces of your life, you can't seem to put them all back together. What happens whenever there's no remedy for the things and the suffering that you're facing on a daily basis? What happens when the pain is so unbearable that you want to take your own life, that you want to take somebody else's life? That you want to just make it all in. You, this, the pain is just too unbearable. The thoughts, the images, the remembrances, the, 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 the history of what has happened to you and your family. What happens when it all falls apart? What happens when you don't know what to do? What happens when you can't stand it anymore? What generally happens statistically is that we take our lives in our own hands. And we end up smashing not just the mirror, but we end up smashing our lives and smashing the lives of those that are around us. And so I'm totally speaking from the Holy Spirit tonight because I have a totally different message. But I believe that God wants to get your attention tonight. I don't think that it was a coincidence that we saw, uh, we, we saw this young man over here over the last, what, seven weeks being, being ignored and overlooked all the days of his life. And some of you are sitting here saying, I can identify with that guy. My mom and my dad, they don't know me. They don't know who I really am. Yeah, they buy me school clothes. They may know my size. They may know my shoe size. They may know my hair color. They may know what even grades I have. But they really don't know who I am. They really don't know me. The person that's broken inside, the person that can't really understand who I even am. I don't even know what I'm supposed to do with my life. I don't even know if this God that we go to church on Sunday and Wednesday is even real. He's never done anything for me. You're sitting here and you're alone. You're sitting here and you don't know what to do. You're sitting here and you're so angry. You're angry at your father, you're angry at your mom, you're angry at your sisters, brothers, and now everybody is a victim because everybody has done you wrong. And so where do we go from this place of brokenness? Where do we go from this place where we can't figure out how we're going to get it done? Maybe, you're, maybe that's not your problem right there. Maybe your problem is this girl right here who... Who, who's been ignored by her mother once again, but, you know, she's not going to go, and she, she loves her life so much, but she's looking for that father figure. She's looking for that love. She's looking for that void space. See, one thing that I found out in my 28 years of living is that nature abhors a vacuum. What do you mean by that? If there's a hole in the ground, something is going to fall into it. If there's something open, something's going to fall into it. And some of us in here are dealing with holes in our heart. And we say, I got to fill it with something. I got to fill it with drugs. I got to fill it with drinking. I got to fill it with lying. I got to fill it with one direction. I got to fill it with Drake. I got to fill it with something because I can't go on with this hole in my heart. So we fill it with all of this stuff. We fill it with all of these things. We fill it with all of this temporary. And yeah, just like the guy who came through the door, you get that temporary fix and you get tipsy and you want to escape and you smoke that weed and you get blazed for just a moment. But when you come down from that high, when you sober up from your drunkenness, guess what? The problem is still there. It's that hole. It's a gaping hole in your heart. And so what do we do? Where do we go from here? Where do we go from this place? I submit to you that the only place to go is up. The only place to go is where? Come on, y'all need to speak back to me. The only place to go is where? Which is God. We all have to get an understanding that God is not just this fairy tale it's Santa Claus, I'll give you what you want anytime you want it, and I just want you to, you know, do these things so I can grant you three wishes and you just have this beautiful life. That's not who God is. God is a loving Father who knows you intimately. In the, in the scriptures, it says in Psalms chapter 139, he says that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He said when I was hidden in the inner parts of my mother's womb, you knew me. You fashioned me. You made me. 
And every time we come to this church, every time we come to this auditorium, we just kind of kick in and talk to our friends and we're, we're here doing worship. And God is saying, hey, I'm trying to get your attention. Hey, I know the situation that you're going that's going on in your life. Hey, I know how many times you tried to commit suicide or thought about committing suicide or thought about giving your body up to that girl or that guy. I know how many times you you thought about going to get another tattoo because you thought that it was going to fill the voice. Because I know how many times you tried to do all of this stuff, but none of it's going to happen. None of it is going to work unless you give your heart to me. And so God wants us to know that he knows you, that he sees you exactly where you are. When you close those doors at night, when you think nobody else can see you, nobody else knows you, turn off the lights. You think the world is at school and Facebook is turned off and your text messages have stopped and you said, oh, finally, no one can see me. God says, I see you. He's the only one that will never leave you nor forsake you. He's the only one that will be there whenever your friends that say, hey, man, I'm going to be there with you for life, man. We're going to be buddies. We're going to do this. We're going we gonna, to we gonna hang together. We're going to die together. We're going to roll together. When even those friends forsake you, God is always there. Even when mom and dad, they forget, to, forget your birthday or forget whatever it is, guess what? God is always there. So the only way that we can go is where? We tried everything else. So now I'm appealing to you to try God. Not, 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 listen, not just try him just to say, oh, you know, I think I like him, you know, whatever. No. I mean, really give him a chance to transform your life. Really give him a chance. Give, give, give God all of you. We've, we go every single day and nobody knows all of us. Nobody, our friends don't know us because guess what? If we want to fit into this crowd, we change ourselves. We change our hair, change our clothes to fit into this crowd. And then if this crowd is not in this year or this semester, oh, I'll go and I'll hang out with this crowd over here and I have to change myself once again. Oh, and then, you know, I got a cuss and I got to smoke over here. But when I go home, my mama, she's not going to be all with that cussing and drinking and all that stuff. So I have to take off all of my clothes and have to put on all these nice little clothes. And I'm saying, yes, ma'am. And yes, sir. And I'm, I'm the nicest person. Nobody really knows us. We've never given ourselves fully to anybody. And so what I'm asking you is to Give yourself over to God and let him work in your life the way that he only knows how to work. Let's read right here in, first, in, in John chapter 15. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. You, already, you, already, you are already clean because the word which I've spoken to you. Here it is right here. Abide in me and I in you. Abide in God. Not just come and visit him. Not just come and say, oh, what's up, God? Oh, that was good. Oh, oh man, we got some giveaways. All this stuff. No, no, no. Not just visit him. Not just pay him a, pay him a visit or not just kind of hang out with him on Sunday and Wednesday. But no, abide in him. What does that mean, Tori? And what is abiding in God? It means to dwell safely, securely in him. Means that your every move, your every, your every breath, your every being, your every thought is now engulfed in who God is. It's not, it's, it's, it's God, it's God going to you, not, not just here to church or not just here and listening to worship music, but it's God every single step, every single time I'm walking into the locker room, every single time I'm walking down the halls, every time I'm walking onto the field or into the court, wherever I go, God is because I'm abiding in him. See, one of the things that I've understood about abiding in God is that if this shirt right here, this shirt has the, the, the ability of animation, right, because I'm in it, right? I can do things through this shirt, and this shirt has the appearance of it can do this, you know, it can Dougie, it can do whatever it got to do, right? But it's because I'm in it. If I'm not in it, it doesn't have the power. It doesn't have the power to move like that. 
And this is what God is getting us to understand is that he wants you in him, not just knowing him. Hey, what's up, God? <laughs> hey, how you doing? That was cool. You know, the other day you healed that girl's foot. It was pretty tight. He doesn't want that. He doesn't want you to just know about him. He wants you to abide in him. He wants you to he wants you to walk, talk, breathe him every single solitary day, not as a dictator, not as a person that says, do this, do this, do this, do this. That's not who God is. He wants you to live in him so that he can live his life through you. So that every situation that you're facing, it's not just you facing the situation. It's not just you, Noah, just going and you just on the field doing your own thing. No, they recognize that something different is about this guy. That, oh, yeah, he still has the swag and all that different stuff. He can run down the field. He's busting heads wide open on the field. But there's something different about him outside of his natural ability. It's the God factor that all of us are missing in our lives. See, God created us in his image and in his likeness. Whenever he created everything, he said, all right, birds of the air, you go ahead and produce after your own kind. Cattle, produce after your own kind. Little roaches, produce after your own kind. But when he came to mankind, he said, no, 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 nobody else can take the credit for this. I want this. So he made you in his image and in his likeness. And all of the things that God is, we are because he's a creative being. He's one that has an imagination. Out of the imagination of God, he created the entire world. And then we say, I have no creativity. I have no ability to do the things that God has called me to do. But God has created you so strategically, so masterfully, so skillfully that if you really understand who you are, your life would totally be changed. But it only happens when you're in God. So I guess this is where my my lesson tonight is going to tie in. Because as I was as I was praying and asking God, what can I tell these youth tonight? What can I tell this generation of planet shakers? What can I tell this generation that is going to change this world and turn it upside down, even as the disciples did back in the day? Do you know that the disciples had and were kicked out of kicked out of towns and all this different stuff because they were known for turning the world upside down? It's all because they understood That if I would partner with God, if I would give God all of my life and dwell in him, that he would live through me. And as a result, the world around me would be changed. And so turn over to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles 16, verse 9. And somebody keep me on time because I don't know where I'm at at all. So let me know where where I'm at because I don't want to go over But 2 Chronicles 16, verse 9 in the ESV, it says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to give strong support, strong support to those whose hearts are blameless towards him or whose hearts are completely his. Then it goes on and says, you have done foolishly in this, for for from now on you will have wars. And I believe that this is something that God is telling all of us now. He said, listen, I'm looking for a certain type of person. I'm looking for somebody that I can show myself strong in. Do you understand that? The, The creator of the universe, the creator of everything that we see that we don't see, the one that put the stars in the sky, the one that set the the, the sun in the sky, the moon in the sky, the one that fashioned the earth, the one that spoke everything into existence. He says, I want to show myself strongly on your behalf. I want to work through you, meaning that, guess what? I want to put my super on your natural so that when you walk into algebra, you're not, it's just not you, it's somebody else working with you. God wants to show himself strongly through you. But the requirement is, is that You have to have a heart that's completely his. Somebody shout completely his. Let me ask you this. How many of you all would love to date this girl? I mean, guys, okay, guys, where you at? Let me hear you make some noise, guys. Let me see you make some noise. All right, so let me ask you this. We have a girl, she's like a mix between, you know, Beyonce and Megan Fox without the little thumb thing, you know, and, you know, she has Rihanna and she can sing and she can do it. She got a body that's a boom, 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 ow, right? But she's talking to you. She's talking to you and all this different stuff. But on the side, she has five other guys that she's dating, too. (laughs) You said that's a no-no, right? Or girls, 
If you have this guy who looks like, you know, Chris Brown in a rendition of all one of one direction and they have the Justin Bieber hair and they got all this. T- I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't be looking at guys, you know, whatever the case is. But th- but he's he's talking to you. He's talking to you. But he has like 17 other girls that he's talking to at the same time. Somebody say, no, 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 right? <laughs> what does that mean? Two minutes? What? Okay, all right. So here we go. So just like naturally we don't want to have any competing affection in our relationships, why do we have so many competing affections in our relationship with God? He says he wants our heart to be completely his. Completely, meaning nothing missing, nothing broken, no hidden parts from him, no closed doors, no past locked doors. He said, I want your whole heart. So why do I give my whole heart to God? How do I give it all completely to him? How do I do this thing? Because in my life, I know that there's times of struggle, there's times of temptation. And if I want God's support, my heart is going to have to be blameless towards him. And so I want you to write this down. Hopefully, take out your iPads, your your Blackberries, your Blueberries, your Pinkberries, whatever you got. Take out a piece of paper, write it on the back of your weave. I don't care what you do. You do something. You take something down. Somebody like, how you know? How you know? How you know? (laughs) Where am I? Where's my? Oh, here it is. How you know? Okay. So write these down real quick. Because I want you to get this, and I, I don't know if I'm going to finish it. I'm not going to finish it, but write it down. Number one, these are the seven ways to please God. Seven tips to please God. How many of y'all are going to heaven? All right. In order to go to heaven, do you think that you need to please God? All right. For those of you who didn't raise your hand, guess what? We got some for you afterwards. Don't worry about that. But number one, everybody say number one. You have to have faith. Everybody say faith. The word of God says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. He says, listen, if you don't have faith, you can't please me. I don't even want to talk to you. Just like some of you ladies, you be like, wait a minute, does he have a job or something like that? Because he can't step to me if he ain't got no job, okay? He got to have a job. He got to be paying his tithes. He got to be doing all that stuff, right? And he can't, even, he can't even step to you. That's a requirement. God says, this is my sole requirement, that you have to have faith. And there's no such thing as blind faith. No, no, there's no blind faith. Faith can be seen. The word of God says faith is the substance, meaning that I can see it, I can detect it. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, and it's evidence of things that are not seen. So God says, listen, in your life, your life has to display my glory. Your life has to display that I'm alive. That it's not just belief, like, oh, I believe, I believe in Santa Claus, jolly old St. Nicholas, Linger. No. He's not saying that. He says your life must reflect what you believe. How many of y'all believe that your, your parents are over there in the main sanctuary? Let me see your hands. How many of y'all drove yourselves here tonight? Is your car still outside? Huh? Is your car? Your car is outside. How do you know? No, 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 wait, wait. How do you know? You have faith that is still there, but you didn't see it. You haven't seen a situation, but how do you know that Sh- Shanae and Raekwon didn't come up here and jack your car? <laughs> so how do you know? You don't know, but you believe. Listen to this, everybody. You believe that it's out there. So why did you raise your hand? Why, no, no, no. Why did you raise your hand? No, no for real. Why did you raise your hand? Because you believe that it was out there. So if I believe something, it will cause me to act. Her, she believed that her car is still out there, so therefore she acted. If you believe that there's a God, if you believe that you're going to heaven, well, act like it. (laughs) 
act like it's so. You can't be in here. You can't be in here. Oh, God, we worship you. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh. And all this different stuff. And then you go back to school like, man, baby, hold up. You don't know who I am, player. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You acting like you don't even know God. Like you weren't even in his presence at all. If you believe God, act like it. Some of y'all need to change your Facebook statuses right now. If you believe God, act like it. See, because God wants you to rep him. We spend so many times knowing all this junk about One Direction and their first names and their middle names and their last names, their baby pictures and all this stuff. And his parents got divorced and he got a tattoo right here and he got it up. But what does Romans 8 say? We know all of this crazy crap about stuff that's temporal. We know all of these bands. We know all of these moves. We know all of these songs. We know all of this stuff. But when it comes to the word of God, oh, I mean, like, I don't know. Like, you know, like, I mean, God so loved the earth that he gave his only begotten and whatever. God wants us to rep him, so you got to have faith. Number two, everybody shout number two. Number two, love. All right? And not music, child, soul child, love, right? No, not that. Love your neighbors as yourself. Let me tell you something. God says love your neighbor as yourself. And how many of y'all believe that? I mean, how many of y'all are in love right now? You're in love. Like, you got to love. You got a boo thing and all this different stuff. All right, you got a boo thing. Some of y'all are like, uh, I don't want to say anything because I'm trying to talk to Rebecca and Veronica. At the same time. So, I don't know. Love your neighbor as yourself, but let me tell you something. He says, Al, come up here real quick. I gotta make sure I stay on time. So he says, Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love your neighbor as you love your love your as you love your well, you can't love someone else if you hate yourself. We see it over here. She said, I love you. Oh my God, I love you. I love you, but she hates herself. How many of us are in relationships with people who say that they love us, but they hate themselves? They say, oh, I love you. I'll be there for you. I'll do anything for you. All this, But they hate themselves. They hate the self-image. They hate what, what, what has happened to them. And every time they look in the mirror, they always remind themselves, I see you, but I hate you. You can't love someone if you hate yourself. And your love for others, get this, your love for others will never exceed your love for God. So, ladies, if he's saying, I love you, girl, you know, I'm just saying, you know, I just got needs, you know what I'm saying? I just love you, you know, and I just really want to be with you, and I believe that God has called us together, all this different stuff. But he don't lift his hands in worship. But he doesn't read his Bible. He got all these naked, crazy pictures, half-naked pictures of girls on Facebook, and he's talking about he loves you. Your love for someone else will never exceed your love for God. And number two, your love for someone else will never exceed your love for yourself. You can't love someone if you hate yourself. Number three, everybody shout number three. Obedience. Obedience. Everybody say obedience. This is what God says. He says, listen, he said, on that day, many will come. Listen to this, guys. This is where it gets dangerous. This is where it gets deep. This is where it gets heavy. Because he says, many will say to me on that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out many devils? Have we not done many wonderful works in your name? Listen to this. He did many, they did many, many mighty works. They cast out devils. Why? Because the name of Jesus works. It's a law, just like gravity. If I drop this, if I drop that, it's going to work. But he says, depart from me because I never knew you. God is looking for an obedient church. He's looking for obedient sons and daughters. 
You can do many mighty works. You can do many wonderful things. You can impress people with your sound and your, and your doctrine and all of this different stuff and how many verses that you remembered and all this stuff. But if you never obeyed him, he doesn't know you. I would hate to live my life in religion and get up to heaven and find out I didn't have a relationship. I did all of these things. I read my Bible in the morning. And I lifted my hands doing worship. But your heart wasn't perfect towards me. You had too many competing affections in your heart. Everybody shout number four. Number four is giving. We have to give. God has called us light. He called us salt. He called us a royal priesthood. He called us all of these things in order for us to give it back to this world. And so we have to give. Everybody shout number five. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Everybody's like, five, seven. Wait a minute. Because many of us treat this world or treat this, this walk with God like a menu. We go up to the menu, we drive up, you know, we got the banging music. Boom, mm, mm, mm. Hey, ho. Mm, mm, mm. Hey. <laughs> and you get up and you roll down the window. Oh, wait a minute, you don't roll down the window because you just got a little, little, right? Hello, may I help you? I'm like, yeah, man, let me get, uh, let me get uh, a number four with extra blessings. Um, let me get a number three with some more favor and a little bit more grace. Uh, let me get a, uh, no, nah. they're like, well, is that complete your order? Do you want any judgment? No, 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 none of that judgment, none of that judgment, none of that, none of that sacrifice, none of that, none of that, you know, denying myself. No, nah, none of that, none of that. No, I'll just take all the blessings and all that stuff. <laughs> we have to sacrifice. God says, present your bodies before him, which is your reasonable service. It's the least, it's a, as a living sacrifice, it's your reasonable service. It's the least that you could do. When Jesus Christ was beat 39 times, 39 stripes on his back, whenever they blindfolded him and they were striking him, they punching him and pulling out his beard, when they laid when they dragged him through the marketplace, one of the most public places in the entire universe at that place in the entire town, they had to, they had to carry that cross with his back just bloody when, when it, with these crown of thorns that were six inches deep, drove deep into his skull. People mocking him, people leaving him, people forsaking him. Just to get to the cross, to be nailed in his hands, 45 degrees back, 45 degrees leaning forward, standing on your tippy toes 45 degrees before. See, the Romans had articulated what it meant to have excruciating pain. Crucifix comes from the same word that we get excruciating from. It was excruciating for Jesus Christ to be on that, on that cross. And every time that he wanted to breathe, he had to push up on his, on his, on his toes in order to take a breath. <sighs> the least that we can do is represent him. He represented us hanging naked on a cross. And he died in good faith that one day you would hear a message like this. And say, I got to know this God. That this God is not, he's not, just a, he's not just a figment of my imagination. He's not just something to do. He's not just something to play around. This is a God that died, who shed his blood for me, who gave his all. And even if I knew, if, if even if I knew at that moment who he was, I'd still forsake him. He still died for you. It's the least you could do. It's represent him. Sacrifice. Matthew 10, verse 37 through 38 says that if anyone loves his mother and father more than me, you're not worthy of me. You can't take up your cross. You can't lay down that pornography. You can't lay down that girl or get, get rid of that guy, that girl, or that booze or that weed. You can't take up your cross. You're not worthy of me. Depart from me. I never knew you. Sacrifice. Number six is prayer. We have to pray, praying with praying to please God. We have to pray. We have to talk to him. How can you be in a relationship with somebody that you never talk to? 
How can you know someone intimately that you never spent time with? So prayer is essential. Number seven is forgiveness. We have to forgive. As hard as it is, as painful as it is, yeah, they did you wrong. Yeah, they raped you. Yeah, they molested you. Yeah, he left you. Yeah, she left you. Yeah, she neglected you. Yeah.